Uh, how do I? Okay, I can open it up. What are we talking about, real quick? <laughs> I hope we're rolling. Audience we members, did you hear that? It's just a guy we hired to sit there. What's on going show. on, everyone? Welcome to MGM <laughs> Podcast. I'm your host, Wyatt Sherwin. We're here with Lucas R -R 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 Wrinkler. Wrinkler? What are you, Asian? Asian? Winkler? Winkler? Winkler. Winkler? Winkler? You thought his name was Wrinkler? I thought it was W-R. No. no, it's Winkler. No, I, it's not Asian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never coming back from Lucas this. Lucas Winkler the Wrinkler. I I'm love gonna call it. you that permanently now. <laughs> you should. The Wrinkler. I never look at this. I don't even know. I love my, it. I don't even know my. Lucas doesn't even thing. flinch. He's been a called so many. Asians things. have a lot of trouble saying my name with the L and the W. So <laughs> don't, 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 don't. So guys, we were just talking about that commercial. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's something for you to really think about. I think it starts with Amazon making billions of dollars with other people's products, and then it goes to Uber making yeah. billions of dollars with other people's cars, Airbnb making billions of dollars with other people's property. What is happening? With, with what? Like, like it becoming. You don't have to own anything to make a lot of money these days. Just know how to Dude, manage it. That's how it. you do it. Like, Just know how, how to manage it. Like, it. like, think about the idea that, you know, if you told someone 10 years ago that there would be a business where, you know, you hop in a stranger's car and like, throw oh, them I know. Like a little bit of yeah. cash and they take you wherever, like, stay in somebody's house. You would think that would right. not work. Or, like, yeah, like staying in someone, some right. random person's house you don't know for like a little bit of, of money. But, like, that's the direction we're going because, you know, those things are starting to get so expensive where, like, that's the, like, you almost need to do that. Like, you need to make money off of like your assets that you buy. Sure. Yeah. You yeah. know, it is interesting because. You know, we've talked a lot about it on this podcast, knowledge-based commerce, right? So I guess the way that you are successful there is kind of like the, the guy you told us about where one day he just jumped on YouTube and yeah. offered a lesson. Yeah, he just started making tutorial videos on audio production and then... People, he realized people would pay for it. Well, yeah, people, people just kept asking him for more and more and more and he was like, okay. He's like, well... I can sell this. Right. And it was like 40 bucks or something for like a course or whatever. And right. he tells a story about how he, like his, his grandfather died or something. He was at his funeral and he, sh and he saw the PayPal notification on his phone. He just got paid by some random person. He didn't even know how to promote it. He just threw it up on his <laughs> website. <laughs> right. Like he didn't even know how to create it or really like he just kind of figured it out. And now there's tons of softwares that basically do it for you. Yeah. Um, and he was like, Oh, I can do this yeah. while I'm not working. I can make money while I'm not working. A hundred percent. And, you know, a lot of content creators, that's that's what we do here at Growing Media is we market your business, whether it's um, you've hired us to write your ad copy or um, manage your digital media or your social media. We can do that from anywhere in the world, right? However, we still have some costs associated with that. Oh, yeah. You have to buy the, the latest, greatest, yeah, like you can't, Here. you can't, yeah, like you can't have like, you know, below tier like stuff. Right. Or like, I mean, I guess you could, but at that point it wouldn't be of, of value truly. You know, I think 90% of like what you're saying with, you know, anywhere from, from homes to like courses to mm -hmm. like, you know, right. any, anything not a, what's the word? Tangible. You, you touch tangible. Tangible. Nothing tangible, like is trust. And like trust that you're gonna get what you know you yeah. you wanted. It's, right. it, there's levels to it for sure, but like, you know, why would you? That's how a lot of these content creators get so huge, or these gurus. You know, like it's not. Some of them are like legit. Like they sure, have yeah. the background. Like they understand it. They've got a different brain. Like they they can put together a really good course. But others, like there's been so many accounts of people like renting a Lambo and renting a suit and yeah. then taking yes. taking pictures next to a window of a jet and then getting off like right. just so they could be like this is how you make money like a G and then, and then <laughs> like because if you made that much money you wouldn't yeah. be on social media pimping yourself no you yeah know? no and, th and then you know people are like here's a thousand bucks teach me everything you know and then it's like oh yeah like I just got scammed you that's, know? that's yeah. true that so yeah true. I mean I think I think the image and you know the the trust and report that you build with like someone is probably more valuable than anything when it comes to intangible product. Yeah, 
Let's talk about some of those popular home-based business ideas now because everybody mm-hmm. seemingly wants to work remotely now. Yeah. Or the hybrid work schedule where you occasionally go in the office just to catch up with your buddies. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think it's it, in some ways it's good, some ways it's bad. Right? Mm-hmm. Like you get to spend more time with your family. But also, like for me, I feel like I get more distracted if I am home right. rather than if I'm in my office. Same. And if I had like a big enough house to where I could dedicate in the office – and close the door, I think that would probably be better. Mm-hmm. But I don't have that, you know, and I know not everybody does have that that, right. that opportunity to actually, you know, close the door behind you and act as if you don't have those distractions. Right. Yeah. I love some of those videos where they look like some of the hardest people, you know, like suit, tie, they never smile, and all of a sudden their kid runs into the room like wearing a diaper on their head or something. <laughs> you know, that's the beauty of working at home, really. Any of those type of things could happen. But, okay, check this out. Soap making. Soap? That's apparently very big right now. Soap, soap making. Oh, okay, so no, Candle making. Soap making. I could see that. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I've seen that at like those fairs or whatever. Like here's a booth with like a bunch of scents of like soap. And, but now you have yeah. Etsy. You can buy direct, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Facebook. Yeah. yeah. People are making stuff. I guess there's a high demand on soap making. I had no idea. Me either. You, you know what's really interesting? What? Uh, my brother-in-law, Lena's brother, mm-hmm. he's been selling like specialized coins that he finds in packs. Oh. And like he does like these live streams. And it's just, he just does it whenever he wants. And he's That's made cool. some decent money. And really? I'm very confused about it because I don't care about coins at all. Oh, but, but there are people who but, do. But yeah, but yeah like it, it's like a big deal. Yeah. And I'm very surprised. I've seen people do like, like gold knives. coins. No, it's like you buy like a like a 50 pack of nickels or, or something. And True. there are there are like special ones from certain years yeah. that are actually super valuable. Very valuable. Like more valuable than the five cents or whatever. Right. It, mm-hmm. it could be whatever, quarters, pennies, whatever. They did value one of those not long ago, and it was just astronomical. Like, it was a quarter, but it was a... Uh, this or that, yeah. Yeah. Right. And thousands of dollars. Right. At quarter. Just because of, like, the rarity of it? Yeah. Right. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sought after. So they say that podcasting is another way. It's a home business idea. Yeah. We haven't made enough money yet. No. Uh, to... to cl- <laughs> No. To verify, I don't know. Maybe we, maybe we have we we let Lucas handle the an- analytics. Things, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just pocketing. All so little, people little. are like, "Well, how do you Lucas make money like, on no, that?" No, we've yeah. never made a dollar. <laughs> so <laughs> you make money by listenership, viewership. You're paid, right? They monetize it on the platforms. Uh, I'm not not necessarily on like uh, I. Do, well, yes. So there there are ways. Yes. Okay. So there are ways that you can make it into tiers. So right. You can have a bunch of free podcasts. Right. And then so say like you do like a two hour interview, really deep, well thought out interview with somebody. You give out an hour of it for free. And okay. then if you want the next two hours, I see. Pay ten dollars a month, and you you always get the extended version of the podcast. Oh, sure. Okay. Kind of like a Patreon type of thing. Right. And right. And then of course you can always have sponsors. Sponsors, where they pay sponsors, you a yes. set amount per episode that you say, hey, That's you big. should go check out this product. Right. Yeah. Brought and to you th- by. Those are the two mm-hmm. main ways. And of course, you can get paid for views on YouTube and um, Rumble and stuff like that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Again, people just want to, they want to pay for what you know. Yeah. yeah. I, well, I mean, it's always been like that. Well, not always been like that, but like for a long time, I feel like. You know, podcasts just kind of got big, I feel like, recently in, like, the last, I'd say the last in a decade, right? Oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, for sure. Probably five years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. But um, I think it's been a decade. I think it's been a full decade? Yeah. Like, since when it really like, blew up? Well, See Joe I mean, Rogan? Like, since it since it really yeah. started to, like, take off. Right. Yeah. Like, but, yeah, I got to blow up, I would I say I got a bone years. to pick with Joe Rogan because he's, like, right here and we're, like, right here. I know, know man. He really needs close. to just, you know, you ever heard, okay, you ever heard of a hand up yeah not a hand out we would just like a little hand up yeah. okay joe it's not asking too much freaking ro jogan <laughs> ro jogan, jogan dude <laughs> all right here's another one and this is up your alley nutritionist how many people do you know now oh, yeah. are begging for people to train mm. them to give them a meal plan to encourage them personal training so big dude there's a lot of i feel like there's a lot of money in that and it's like but like also, I feel like if you're really good at it and you're like really into it, I feel like it could be really stressful because like 
you know, the people who are truly passionate about it and getting like people to, you know, pick up healthy ways and like be consistent in the gym and whatever, like that must be like, so like straining on you when it's you ruling, know, the yeah. natural human like is to run. <laughs> yeah away yeah, right. not with you or, or, away. or lie or be like you know yeah. I, i'm doing this and doing this when in reality they're not and then it's like okay well like you know I, i'm a failure as a personal trainer i can't get this person to lose weight you know what i'm saying yeah. and you're they're not but like it's like that's your job so right. it's like if i can't do that but then again i mean it's also you know you're getting paid to do what you love because like the, the gym and like personal training, I feel like people are only going to really gravitate towards those who look like they really do it. Yeah. And 100%. I don't think, I don't think it's really something you can cheat. So like they probably mm. do love it. Yeah. Well, oh, you steroids, think you can but stop. besides it's that, not. I think there's even besides with steroids, that, I feel like there's still like a lot of work. That yeah. Goes there's into still it. work that has to go into it. But, yeah. but yeah. I, I do feel like that's cheating. No, yeah. I mean, it, that's why it's tested for in like powerlifting that's contests true. and stuff. Yeah. So they don't like blow everybody out the water. Right. So, but yeah, I mean, when it comes to knowledge commerce, I think there are two, three main areas where people make the most money is mm -hmm. if you teach somebody how to make money, mm -hmm. like oh, people, yeah. people, people are going to pay for that. If you're going to teach someone how to be healthy, whether that's it, it be eating or exercising, people are going to pay for that. Yeah. And then, or if you're going to teach somebody how to, how to have better relationships oh, always. just in general in your life, 100%. Like people are going to pay for that because people, yeah. people want to save their relationships with people. That's so true. Or just like motivation in general. I feel like those I, books yeah. have exploded. But like those three things that you've just said, like, I don't think it's many, but like there's a few people on the internet who have like cracked that kind of formula. And like, now that I'm really thinking about it, like, they perform very well because they just hammer, oh. they hammer hard at that towards people. And like, let's be honest, like, I mean, they probably have a better hold on it than most people like personally, but they're still going through their own stuff. But they kind of, you kind of have to put on that front of like, okay, like my life is amazing and I never sure. have a bad day. And like, you're not going to have a bad day. Either. The reason you're having a bad day is because you're not trying hard enough, but right. like, it's a Go good read thing. another book. It's like, like, I think, I think that like, you know, ethically, it might be a little off, but at the same time, if it gets the job done, if it motivates someone to be like, yeah, man, like, you know, I'm tired of being a loser. I'm going to, I'm going to get up today and I'm going to run 20 miles and do a thousand push ups or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. like, I know that has a little extra 20 miles. I've never <laughs> ran 20 miles a day in my life. I never no, ran. I, I don't know if I've well, ran no, 10. You're consistently doing You've ran 20 miles in a day. Four? Dude, two, uh, two a day is when I played soccer. hundred percent. We probably ran close to like 30. What? 30 miles? Yeah, because... Uh, no the wonder you're the way you are. No, I'm yeah, kidding. Just uh, kidding. Yeah, that makes sense. No, because like for our first... Like when we did two-a-days, and anybody who's played soccer can attest to this. When you do two-a-days, on the morning or a practice, because, um, you know, morning and an and a, and a evening practice. The morning practice, they don't tell you to bring your cleats. You're not going to get... You're not going to touch a ball. You're going to run. Oh. You just run. You're going to run morning. until you throw up, and then you'll run some. What? Have yeah. you thrown up at soccer practice? Oh. All dude. the time. To, on two a days every day, every time, every time they don't stop until you puke. Yeah, I mean, well, it it, there's there's a two hour limit, but I mean, you won't you won't make it. Most people don't unless you kept wow. yourself in really great shape in the summer. We were teenagers, of course, we didn't keep ourselves in great shape. <laughs> like you weren't like Olympic athletes. Like no, was like, no, but I mean, but I was still, I was still running when on our first practice. I could still run a six minute mile. No, no, no issue there. There it's you go. Fast. We 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 all could, but that didn't matter. Right. Like we just kept going. Wow. But we were the most in shape team in our league. That's awesome. Yeah. Sacrifice. Dude, I like do a down and back and throw up. Like <laughs> I can't, I'm not, I was never been like that. I remember I ran like eight miles or nine miles. I thought I was like David Goggins or something. Dude, I was like flex. I was like, they don't know me, son. Oh and then I'm gosh. like, you know, but, but dude, that's, that's empowering, man. If you it run is. 30 miles, you need to. Yeah, I'm sure you got a book somewhere where you wrote down everything. It's probably a bunch of mean things about your coach, but then it's like, here's what he did right. today. You know, I, I need that. As a result, yeah. he hates the thought of running. And as today. a result of that, he can run probably, or he, he not, could, not run, now, could yeah. run a 530 mile. So, no. I mean, that's. Heck, heck no, not now. I'm I'm lucky to get under seven minutes now. That's still lucky. I mean, that's still, that's a, do you know anything about mile times? Or of no? course I know. <laughs> what do you, what do you think here? No, dude, I've, what? What are we talking, okay, anyway. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. So apparently start a course that's on how a, to run a five yeah, minute mile. Start a course. A run, <laughs> that would sell. I don't yeah. actually. That's not a bad idea. No, it, it probably <laughs> exists already. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. There's definitely running guides out you there. You would have a great resume though. People would sign up based on your past experience. Uh, yeah. I so guess. there you go, yeah. dude. If you wrote, I ran thirty miles every day hey, for a right, week on the right. intro page to your course, they're like, in. Be like, yeah. Are like, yeah. Like I just want to run or, a third of that. Or they yeah. click off and be like, heck yeah. And I'm gonna teach you thirty miles in a lifetime. Right. Let alone a day. <laughs> and they leave out that important part about you yakking every time you, you do it. But, you know, whether you're you're starting up a business, a home-based business, you're already established, there are some things that people fail to implement. And, you know, this is kind of that roadmap of success, whether you've read this already in a book or somebody told you online. Marketing, whether you are doing it all your own at home you still have to market your business. You have yeah. to let people know you're open. Right. Yeah. Or you might as well close. Well, yeah, it's like you're going <laughs> to, yeah. I mean, it's, it's literally anything. Like if people don't know you exist, how are they going to buy from you? It happened just the other day. There was a, a little restaurant that opened uh, the town over from me. And I happened to see on Facebook where they were making a public, you know, plea to to come and see them. They were going to have to lessen their hours, losing money. They're doing yeah. everything they can to make it. I'm like, this is the first time I've heard of you. Where were you the day you opened, like yeah. marketing your business, letting right. people know you're there? Yeah, It's a bad sign where you can live in an area and like, you know, go months without noticing a business until like you finally drive by what, it and it what, says closing soon. What, what, what kind of business was it? Again? It was a restaurant. Okay, so. And I desperately so need other let's, restaurants. Let's go back then to our, the guy that we interviewed today. Yeah. Their hospitality must have not been good enough for people to talk about it for the people mm. to continuously come back. It was Which, that, and also the rising cost of supplies. But that I but, think, but restaurants thrive off of, of that's right. Of word, word of mouth, mouth marketing. Word of like mouth. People are like, "Oh my gosh, I just had this so meal good. there. It was so good. Right. I'm, I'm going to go back and try this." Okay, duly noted. Yeah, and that comes back to the hospitality. Like, how did they get treated while they were there? That's right. You know what I mean? And they that's, get their that's, money's what he, worth. that's what he talked about today. That is so it's true. A big deal. And sometimes you only get one shot. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. especially um, if you're hidden a little bit, like you're not off Main Street. You know what I'm saying? Like you're tucked yeah. away. Like oh yeah, it's really important that you market yeah. well. So true. Because like, I mean, there's been like businesses in the past or like restaurants. Like you'd be like, oh, I'm so excited to eat here, and I'm like, I've never, or like I have heard of that, but I'm like, I've never seen it. Like I wonder where it is. And then we drive down like three alleys, and then we go through the closet of Narnia, <laughs> and then that's where the restaurant is. Like it's. Right. it's but it's just so good. Like the yeah, hospitality right. and the food, it just out outlasts everybody else. Oh, yeah. yeah. There, there, there are places I would drive to, you know, 100%. two or three times as, as long away just to have the food. To have yeah. the food. Yeah. Or, or the experience yeah. that, exactly. that their restaurant brings. Yeah. yeah. 100%. And, and we've all seen it. There are restaurants without a sign. You just have to know where it is. And, <laughs> and those are. They're doing just fine. The really good restaurants. <laughs> yeah. So that, you know, that leads us to the next thing. You got to think about um, customer acquisition and then retention. So the acquisition is getting them in the door. Right. But like you just said, the moment you get them in the door from the person who greets them to the person who waits on them, to the person preparing the food, person bussing the table, you know, all of that is the experience yeah. that you're having, you know, right. and you'll remember that. And, and that right there will either lead towards retention or adios. Yeah. I'm not coming back. Right. People aren't very forgiving when it comes to their food, especially not early on. No. Like if, if you've supplied good service, a few times right you then, can have a bad day all, all of a sudden you yeah you, you have a bad day but so it can't be the first the, day the cook screws up or something right then yeah and i actually heard about this about a local restaurant that happened to in uh, carterville the other day um a couple of friends of mine went to this new opening at this new restaurant it's like mm. a coffee shop yeah place. and he said, i hadn't heard of he it he said they waited for like an hour and a half really first day wow and when he got the food he said it was okay oh it wasn't like it wasn't bad but it wasn't great what happened did they just have a uh, line out the door and couldn't. No, he said it wasn't like. Oh, he he said it wasn't busy enough for them to have be, that kind of a for an hour and a half. But it's like simple food too. Like oh. complex. yeah, I think wow. uh, that's bad. I think a first impression speaks like a thousand times louder than every other following impression. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you know, it's like you think about meeting somebody. Like you know, that person can have a bad time or like you know, say something like 
on the 200th impression, not the first. Right. Yeah. So that's how, right. that's how you get exiled. You know? Yeah. You guys are leading perfectly into the, the next thing. So, um, you have to be a customer of your business or service. So you have the good old quality control in place, experience your restaurant, experience your coffee shop, you know, yeah. go in and, and what does it look like from that side of the counter? I think that's important. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, can you, can you step out of your own shoes and step into a customer's shoes and mm-hmm. then walk in and be like, Oh, I don't like that. Right. You know, how did I feel when I got yeah, in here? You know, right. how long did I have to wait or, or whatever? That's, that's all uh, I love that undercover boss. Oh, that's such a good show. That show. Have you seen that? Yeah. That's so good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, guys, that's what we like to do is give you some tips, some tricks. And, um, and we've got a lot of answers cause we've had a lot of questions over the years. So Oh, yeah. You know? Absolutely. And if you have some or you can answer them better, yeah. come on our podcast. We will not dance on our podcast. I might. I might, too. Yeah. I'm, I'm a sucker guys, for views. I thought you were on my side. Especially if it's the weekend, <laughs> baby. All right. Adios. We'll see you later. Okay. Love you. Bye. bye. Love you. Bye. <laughs> love you. Bye. <laughs>